Hey everyone, this is Felix Warren, and today I'm going to show you how to magically cleanse objects. So first of all, what kind of objects do we really need to cleanse? Well, there's this haul I got from Goodwill. And Goodwill is great for getting all kinds of cheap things and very interesting things, but pretty much everything from there is used. And a lot of the things have been with someone for a long time. Sometimes they leave that person because the person died or because of unfortunate circumstances. And so the items that you find at Goodwill can sometimes either just have some spiritual gunk on them or it can actually be haunted. So when it comes to this little collection of stuff, which is a very interesting entire $9.99 case of nice little antiques and dollhouse furniture. Um, I got this at Goodwill all for 10 bucks and it definitely felt a little off. It felt a little malcontent and angry, um, but not like full on haunted, like I'd actually have to handle an actual entity, just, just a little grumpy. So the way to tell if something really needs a cleanse is basically if you do have the sense of certain energies or certain emotions from objects, it's a very easy way to tell. Basically, you just sort of sense this object feels very sad, very, grouchy, angry, or just kind of mildly feels off. Or when you're around it, you just start to feel worse. Um, those are some ways of being able to tell that it needs cleansing. Um, it's also kind of a good practice just to cleanse anything that you kind of take on, especially if it's a used item. Now, I will say that you don't always have to scour them completely clean. You can just cleanse them enough to where they feel nice, but you're not cleansing off every bit of the past energy from the object because some objects actually have some really nice history attached to them, and that's why I like to get things from places like Goodwill, because I am very interested in stuff that is a little older and has a history, and so I don't want that to go away. I want to keep that, but I do want whatever I have to be clean. So let's take a look at this haul and see what we have to work with. I actually have not opened this yet. I just gave it a cursory look whenever I first got it. And in fact, it looks like it's a little bit more sealed up than I thought. So let's get that open. Somebody did a really good job with this. Now, I don't even know how this got to Goodwill. That's always the mystery with Goodwill is how did this item get here? Where is it from? You never know unless you find some clue on the object, but that's always kind of like the fun mystery of it, isn't it? So I think that this was probably in an antique shop and somebody sold off their entire antique shop or died and their entire antique shop basically just went into a uh, estate sale or whatever. So we have this entire case that's just full of dollhouse furniture and very tiny antiques and very neat. And I do have some plans for some of these things, but First, I have to clean them off. So let's take a look. Um, I want to grab something that looks like it's reasonable to clean. This is very interesting. Um, it's a very small teacup from a little tea set. Um, it says Occupied Japan, which makes it uh, have a very interesting history on its own. I'm not going to go into my antique collector uh, aspect right now, but this that kind of makes me excited. Um, so, and it's been glued back together after being broken with, uh, gold glue, which kind of makes it a, uh, interesting item on its own as well. I, I'll probably link in the, uh, description on a little bit more on this item because it's pretty neat. So, has a history, is interesting, um, is not too bad, actually. This could just use like a touch of cleansing. So I'm gonna set that aside over here and let's see if there's anything else in here. This is an item I was interested in using. Um, nice little glass dish, probably from a dollhouse. This has a bit more feel like it needs some more work. So we're gonna put that aside. Um, when you pick up something that needs a lot of cleansing, you might feel a little sick. Um, you might just feel a little bit uneasy. You might even feel like you're being looked at. Um, sometimes it just feels like you shouldn't have this item even though you, you know you have a right to have it. So it's best to just sense it out and see what you can do about it. B 
be respectful to the items. Don't don't act like they're unworthy or they're needing to be punished or something. I am not sure how to explain that, but basically when you're respectful to items, it's kind of like being respectful to entities. So that's all of the items I'm going to pull out here for now. I'm going to cleanse the rest later on my own. So, or I'll take out some more later and show you some different methods. So here's uh, a little diagram I have called Philosophy First. Um, just randomly got it at a shop. Um, and it's, it's an alchemical thing. I kind of like to have it down on my workspace to sort of charge the space. So you can use any kind of symbol that you want and has relevance to you. Uh, so I've grabbed this one first, so we're going to work on it first. There's a few ways that you can cleanse items. Uh, the first one is the easiest one. It's the one that you probably will all have access to, and that is cleansing with water. So all you have to do with cleansing with water, and usually I just do this at a sink, to be quite honest. I don't even use a ritual space. You take the object, you put it in water, and you wash it off. Now, of course, you want an object that is okay to submerge in water. If you have, like, a book or something, this isn't going to work. But this is a piece of glass, so it'll be fine submerged in water. Um, it doesn't even have a coating that's going to wash off. It's solid green glass, so you put it in water and you kind of concentrate. You just imagine this being washed off and imagine the energy subsiding. Now this is acting a little bit like it doesn't want to quite do that. Um, it's kind of like feeling like it's pushing back, like a lens almost. Um, and I would say that this, I can't give you the entire history of this item right now. I'd probably have to take a lot of concentration, although I can sometimes do that. Um, it just feels like it used to be somewhere and it's not happy that it's no longer there and it can't go back there. So that's sad and I definitely sympathize with it, but I'm going to try to give it a better home now. So since it's not going to work in just the water, um, something you can do with water is, of course, add salt to it. Um, salt is a good cleansing agent. It tends to dissolve energies and nullify things. So you don't want to use a whole lot of salt if you want something to retain its memories and just generally retain what it's like. But let's say we add a little bit of salt to give it a bit of cleansing first off. And that's pretty easily done. So just add a little bit, just a touch. And that will give the water some cleaning power without being too overpowered. And We'll see how that reacts to that. Be respectful. And that actually felt really soothing to the object, like it was actually calming down. And I think that's really all it needed was just to sort of be cared for. A lot of objects really do just need a good actual cleaning the mundane way, and they will be totally fine. They just, they feel cared for, and then all of a sudden they're no longer malcontent. Um, so this one really just needed some salt water and now it feels pretty good. Um, I think that it could use just a little bit of a charge now to kind of make that kick into place. And um, so what I'm going to do is use incense. Incense is what you can use for smoke cleansing. Um, smoke cleansing is another pretty easy one because all you really have to do is put it in smoke. This is already kind of hot since it's a sensor. So I've got a coal going in here. I have another video showing you how to light these coals and how to use um, incense that goes on coals. What I have here is some sandalwood that's just powdered. And I'm going to drop it onto there. Just drop it onto the coal and it'll give us a nice bit of smoke. So I'll put the lid back on and you can actually just do this. And this is kind of giving it a little bit of soul and just generally niceness, sacredness, kind of giving it a new context now that's been removed from the old one. So I like smoke cleansing to give something a holy feel. Um, if you just want to clean something and use it for mundane purposes, you don't really need to use smoke cleansing because it's a, just a totally different context. But 
if you use incense in everything that you do, possibly incense has a more mundane context to you. So it is also just depends on who you are and what you do. But this is, this is pretty much done. It's such a small object, it really doesn't take too long. It's kind of useful that I picked up a whole case of doll furniture in that regard. So um, that one's done. This one, I am going to try the salt cleansing. And so salt cleansing, um, basically you just stick something in salt and bury it in salt or put it on top of the salt, leave it on salt for a while. Fairly easy. Um, I'm not going to do much because, like I said before, this thing is not in need of too much of a cleansing. Um, don't do this with certain rocks that are going to react to salt. Just kind of Google up your rock if you have a rock you want to cleanse because some rocks actually react with salt. So that that's pretty much that. I'm going to drop some salt in there and it's going to stay cozy like that for a while. Um, so those are several types of ways that you can cleanse. And then we're going to try another one. And let me see if I can pick up another piece of interesting dollhouse furniture for us to cleanse. Uh, let's see. I'm going to try candle cleansing. Here's... There's so many interesting ones I'm actually having trouble picking just because I like them all. Uh, this... This could do... It also needs some actual, a good wash in the sink though. Um, sorry to have you listen to me picking through all this stuff, but this I did just open this without any real uh, preparation because I wanted to kind of show you things as I looked through them. So uh, let's try this little thing. It's kind of part of a set, part of three dish set. It's just a very small glass plate. And what we're gonna do is Light up a candle. Pretty simple. I do not have any special reason why I use this candle. Um, you can use certain colors of candles if you prefer. I just use this one because I picked up a whole bunch of um, pumpkin spice candles whenever they were on sale recently. So <laughs> I like pumpkin spice. It's the season. If you watch this six months later, it's no longer pumpkin spice season. So candle cleansing, pretty easy. Don't use this on anything that's flammable. Don't get the candle too close to the object because it's gonna get carbon all over it. Although with this, not gonna be a big deal getting carbon, I could just wipe it off, but I don't wanna get this thing hot and then have it shatter. It is glass, so. With that said, all you really have to do is just pass the candle's energy, like get through the heat and imagine that white light of the candle flame, the just the light coming through it and bathing the object, kind of getting through there. And there's not like a whole lot that needs to be done to this one. This one, I feel weird saying this, but this one has kind of an attitude, but it's not a bad attitude. Um, I wouldn't want to completely scrub the entire attitude off of this plate. It's just a piece of dollhouse furniture. It was played with a lot going to have something about it. So I'm going to stick it next to the candle and I'm just going to put the other two here as well since there's a whole set in here. Um, tongs aren't necessary but I kind of like not burning my fingers so that's just me. So this one's a little bit more of a bowl actually. That one didn't take long. Here's the other plate. This one needs an actual wash in the sink but I'll do that later and that one's done. Not much to them. Glass does not hold a lot of anger and funk in it. Other items do a bit more. Metal items can definitely hold a lot in them. Um, I actually have some metal items in here. Uh, actually, no, this is plastic. It looks like metal. It's an iron. So this is null. <laughs> it doesn't even need a cleanse. Uh, let's see. This is a metal item. Oh, this is interesting and sweet. Um, it just needs like a little bit of water. So this is like a little iron too, painted. But I don't wanna wash that off. So I would just sprinkle it with water. And that's it. Most of this stuff's pretty happy. So like I said, antique shop. This is the tag that was on it. Hand painted, metal iron, $3. So. I 
think we might be done here. Let's see if there's anything else. Ah, yes, there is a method I wanted to show you. Um, so this one is a little different and um, might seem a little strange, but basically I'm going to use science to clean these. And I'll show you how to use science to clean items magically. It might seem a little weird, but you'll love it. It even has special effects. So let's find another thing in this case that will definitely stand up to a little bit of activity. Uh, here's another from that set. Really cute. Little ball on a stand. Um, could use a bit of a cleanse. So definitely will survive the next technique, I'm going to say. By the way, this also one, this one also says from Japan. So it's all a bunch of Japanese dollhouse furniture in China. It's really cute. So what am I using? I have a big bag of baking soda. It weighs about five pounds. And I'm just going to spoon it onto there. Baking soda in itself is very cleansing. It's also very cleansing IRL, of course. You can use it to kind of defunk your refrigerator, defunk your carpet, defunk your cat's litter box, anything. So we've got enough on there to kind of show the excitement. I'm going to bring this closer so you can see it a little bit better. And then the real fun is about to start. First you get the baking soda and it's already pretty clean, but let's say that this had like a lot of funk hanging onto it. Then you do this, you pour vinegar onto it. Whoa, so explosive. Um, this is really good for uh, like removing curses, just removing all kinds of ick from an item. It, nothing really tends to remain afterward. You do get the smell of vinegar, but it, it does smell very clean, so that one's done. <laughs> After this, I would give it a bath in water to kind of make it smell better, and also I'd kind of charge it a little bit because it probably over cleansed that one. So it might be a little bit null, but there you go. Those are ways to magically cleanse items, and um, you can get even more creative on top of this by using color work, by using more complex stuff, doing this inside a circle, whatever. These were very simple items to cleanse, so I didn't have to do a lot, and I'll be doing pretty similar stuff to the rest of the case. Um, so, hope you enjoyed the video. If you want, you can check out my blog that I co-run called Merkava Party Van, where I write a lot of articles on how to do magic, how to work with spirits, how to work with demons, all kinds of stuff. There's a link down in the description. And as always, thanks for watching.